Mm. Should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind? Should all acquaintance be forgot and the days of old lang syne? Yeah, you, you ought to check these lyrics out. It's pretty in- interesting about going into the new year. Old times have passed. For old lang syne, my friend. Oh, we'll drink a cup of kindness yet for the sake of old Lang Syne. Uh, yeah, uh, um, it's, um, it's, um, pandemic, uh, report on a Sunday night. And I want to talk to y'all about some things that's been pressing me a lot of you didn't know that um a a few days leading into the new year uh christmas uh, yeah leading into christmas i got a strike on youtube they gave me a strike and put me in youtube jail and i couldn't post for a week which would have messed up my whole plan to go live for the weekend for christmas I was planning to do a show, this show. And uh, every time I was planning to do this show, something happened. So I got the strike. So I had to contest it. And uh, the strike was based off of the video, the show I did on uh, Brother Twix and the whole suicide subject matter. And they thought that I was insisting that or encouraging uh, and they misread it, so I contested it, got the account back, they took the strike off. And then when I was getting ready to do this show again, my back went out, and I had to shut everything down. <laughs> and so, here I go, here I go again, letting y'all know that ain't nothing gonna keep Brother Jones down from doing what I know what the Lord has given me to give to the people. I'm going into 2023 like a lion's roar because I'm so sick and tired of people coming up with excuses that they didn't know something when the answer, my friend, is right there in your face. It's on your phone. Every house got a big old book. Uh, donated to you uh, by uh, Madea in 1920, and all of the family names are in the first few pages. Y'all know that Bible. Mm -hmm. No excuse. So 2023 is going to be the year of the teacher, and I'm going to play a big part of that. So I need you all to buckle up today. Women, you ain't going to like this. Now, that's good. Maybe I got too many women on my friends list. I probably need to chop that down a little bit. Prophetic gimmicks and silly women is the name of this show. We may go long, clock keeper. I don't know, but just keep your eye on the prize. I'm going to see y'all in about 60, 65. And uh, you might want to go watch something else. President Trump, if you see this, please save us. I don't even see our American flag anymore. Biden's talking with some kind of crazy flag. This is America. This is our land. Please, President Trump. Please, please. I hope you have a plan. God, please save us. Save us from the devil, please. Y'all are about to have a panic attack. <laughs> this is our country. Our country. This is awful. God, please save us, please. Base. 
get you thinking and where the topics are hot. Feel free to comment whether we agree or not, cause he's got something to say. Sir Walter Jones, Sir Walter Jones, he's got something to say. Sir Walter Jones, Sir Walter Jones show. Come on in. The water's fine. Beat a little booty beat. Body I hello about the sword sword is on show. I'm here. It is the evening edition, baby. Come on in, the water's fine, water's fine. Y'all all right? Good, good, good. Listen, I'm just excited uh, that the new year is here now that I could uh, not wait on some things because I was waiting for a while to talk about certain things. I want to come out of the, the gate, the barn, uh, beating with a whip and a chain, going into the temples and beating the money changers. That's what I'm going to do today. I want to thank God for we have new bunkers that are spread all over the world now. We've got them in different places now. We thank God. Um, give a little shout out to my bunker friends who are in Brazil. Uh, we have them in South America. I'm sorry, uh, South Africa. Praise God for that. We have them in Israel. We have them, uh, we have bunkers in France. We, we have bunkers in the United Kingdom. We do have bunkers in India. We have bunkers in China. Uh, we have I believe we have bunker in Australia. We had one in Australia. Uh, let's see. We obviously have bunkers in the United States and we have a bunker in Canada. All right. We thank God for the, for, for the continents that are being represented here. And recently we've got a family in Norway. All right. So thank God for the bunkers who are spread throughout uh, the nations who are listening to a little skinny guy from the west side of Chicago uh, to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. All right. Um, there is uh, there's a couple other uh, African nations that we do have a couple bunkers in. I just can't remember the two. It's about three nations here. I think Kenya is one of them for sure. All right. So we thank God uh, for. Uh, yeah, that's right. We do have quite a few bunkers in Turks uh in Caicos we have a few bunkers we have quite a few bunkers in the Bahamas we have them in uh Dominican Republic we have them in Jamaica uh we have them um let's see in most of the islands we have them in Belize and these are members of actually of my church and that's why I know that some of these people let me know that they're listening all right, and obviously we have them in, in uh, we have them in Haiti. Had quite a few uh, in Haiti, so we thank God for um, the bunkers who are spread throughout the nations. Amen. What a what a wonderful platform uh, we have here to be able to to teach and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ throughout the world. Amen. So when someone put up when my my um, my staff put up. A, a post that I mentioned New Year's New Year's congratulations. Now, what did I say? Happy New Year. That is from Pastor Walter Jones. You had a couple people say you a pastor. Oh, I didn't know that. When did that happen? <laughs> I'll tell you, boy, Americans are something else. Uh, the scripture is something. Uh, it helps us out. First Timothy chapter three speaks of an elder, a supervisor, bishop, or a presbyter. It gives all of these terms for this one person. And once I was ordained as an elder, then that actually sealed the deal there. America or some parts of the world go into another thing to make a man a pastor by uh, taking, having these what y'all call consecrated services and then do the whole process all over again. Now he's elevated as pastor. Well, he's, he's already an elder. Then y'all elevate him as a pastor. And, and, you know, we don't really see that kind of process <laughs> you know, in, in the scriptures. 
so people will look at you as not being worthy of a pastor because some bishop didn't come by and, and go Ali Ali Oscar say <laughs> and then bam <laughs> you're now pastor inside of a building notice that the typical installation of the pastor is put him in a seat and let him uh, you know rule over the flock right here all right if he if he leave his boundary he 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 can't be a pastor all right and so that's 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 the unfortunate thing that we do see here all right we're going to talk about silly women in a minute but i want to talk about um a few things on this show today i'm going to talk about the effects of prophecies i'm going to talk about silly women i'm going to talk to you men i'm going to talk about hypocrisies i'm going to talk about fake prophets i'm going to talk about healings and prosperity we're going to talk about a a a pool and a soup of things uh, so that you could uh, prepare yourself to be mad at me when I'm done. The first thing I'm going to do is talk about the effects of prophecies. It can affect you in a very, very in, uh, um, important way, but it can affect you in a very, very negative way. And it can affect you greatly. And you really, really have to be careful when you hear a prophetic word coming from your pulpits, from your family, from friends, from TBN, from the Word Network, the church channel, or, or some YouTube channel, or some Facebook pastor. You need to be careful because you need to check, check it. Try the spirit by looking into the word of God. And if a prophet speaks something and it doesn't come true, the presumptuous word comes up and then you'll hear some, one of these prophets flip it. And now I'm going to show y'all who that is in a minute. The Lord shows me visions and dreams. When the Holy Ghost came and uh, get ready to do some deep teaching, y'all. So hold on. Acts chapter 2, the Holy Spirit came. The day of Pentecost has fully come. They were all in one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven like as a rushing mighty wind, all right? And it filled the house where they were sitting, clove in tongue, like as of split, like as of fire. And they began to speak with the holy, well, in tongues, that is. They began to speak with tongues at the spirit did give utterance. And then... As Peter began to preach this gospel and what was going on, because they thought that these men and women were drunk, uh, he said, no, it's not even drinking time yet. And then he said that these young men will see visions and these old men will dream dreams. I'm both young and old. I dream every night. If I close my eyes right now, I'm dreaming. Most of my visions are things that I see they are uh and they are like a motion picture my mo my dreams are all motion pictures that you should see my dreams they are absolutely spectacular some of them can be um you can't really some of y'all wouldn't be able to handle them some of them i can't handle them, but most of them are blockbuster movies and they are really spectacular to the point where i don't usually don't want to wake up because I'm in the middle of this movie and then I wake up because I don't know something maybe the heat is too high in the room or something all right but when I'm having visions, those visions come to me and the Lord shows it to me. And I know that the Lord gives them to me. In many cases, he gives them to me for me. And it's not always for you all to know what those visions are. So I don't always tell you the visions. Prophets tend to tell y'all almost everything. And they are telling y'all stuff. I saw it. I had a dream. I had a vision. What have you. And then they want to tell the people. And with the hopes that that comes true, and then they do what's called a Texas shooter. A Texas shooter is a person, uh, it was a, a term coined for, uh, uh, he would shoot uh, 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 on the, uh, a target, and he would have target practice, and then he would miss. And then what he would do, he would, go, he would go to the target, and he would move the target over where the bullets are, and say, see, I hit those. All right, and that's what prophets do. They, they shoot. They miss. They don't focus on the miss. They focus on the hit. So they'll miss 10 times and, and hit it two times. And it's the two times he make a big fuss about. So when I see visions, um, I, I, a lot of times I don't know what it is. And a lot of times I do. And the Lord will say, this is between you and I. This is our private viewing. All right. I'm going to tell you and show you some things. 
all right, that you need to prepare for and prepare your people for it. And you don't have to be specific, but prepare them for uh, something. Uh, and so in January, I had a vision, not a dream. I had a vision of Barbara Walters. And when I had the vision, I knew she died because I've had these too many times. When I had a vision of someone, shortly after, they were dead. There are people who right now um, I see, uh, when I, especially if I have a dream of someone who's either sick or someone is going through something, uh, typically when I have that particular dream, that person is either already dead or they're getting ready to die. I had one last week and it freaked me out because I really, and I, and I, and I, and I, I talked to one of the relatives, but I just couldn't say because you just don't want to alarm. So I just didn't say nothing. When is it going to happen? I don't know. But, and I'm saying this to tell you, this is the antithesis of what prophets do. They won't tell you about death, doom, gloom. No. And so I saw Barbara Walters dying. So what? Why would God be so interested in telling me about something like that? Like we see prophets about the, the, the Cubs are going to win the World Series. So they prophesy over it. And God told me uh, that the, the bangers are going to win, you know, the Super Bowl. Why is God in, involved in, in sports? Why would God be involved in some famous person dying and then tell you that so that you can tell the people so to bring. So even though I knew that this woman was going to die, I made sure I didn't tell y'all what I saw. So instead, what I did in January, I did this because I hate it when people try to bring all this attention to themselves. So here's what I did. Let me go to Facebook. And I think I saved it. Here's what I did instead, because sometimes I don't know what to do. So on January, I simply said, why is Barbara Walters on my mind? I wish I could minister to her right now. As you can see the date, that's January the 7th, 2022. And then what happened? The saints went into prayer. Is Mama Jag. The saints went to my she she saw uh, Betty White, Sidney Portier. They just they just the saints went into prayer. All right. And w w as we were getting into the new year, I, I said, well, I guess that was just a vision because we're getting ready to go into January. She obviously not going to die this year. And one day was it one day before the New Year's? She dies. So then I'm asking God, okay, but but why Barbara Walters? That's a, a life is a life, and it's important that we really feel the compassion of family members when someone dies. Why Barbara Walters? And then I was thinking there that every life, I don't care how famous they are, I don't care how popular, I don't care how rich they are, every life is important to God. Every life. And the Lord is saying, have the people pray for her. She's still alive. And I believe that because of the prayers of the righteous, that it, it avails much. Something was happening in the Walters family. Why? Because every life is precious. She was 93 years old. Some prophet, though, would have taken that vision and called all y'all to his mega church and said this. And then when she died, he or she would have made a big multimedia or uh, spectacle out of that. And if I would tell y'all the things I see all the time, y'all be trying to make me some super prophet. So I don't say nothing. Because it's not for me to do that so that I can be all puffed up. 
I'm doing this show because I need you men and women right now, because I'm going to get to the silly women in a minute. Be careful when you when you come across people who always got to tell you every dream and vision that they've had. So let's talk about silly women since we're on the subject. Because I decided not to bring this up until right now. So I'm going to talk to the brothers. So women, if you want to go, please go if you like, if you need to go and check the stove that you're burning something. But I'm going to talk to the brothers right now in y'all's presence if you want to. All right, brothers, let me say this to you. Women are incubators. They're incubators. Now, I gave my disclaimer. So you all, if you're still here, don't be writing me no emails and say, mm, see, see, that's what you get. Why didn't you? I don't want I'm I'm going to ignore your email. So I gave you I gave you the disclaimer. Women are incubators, brothers. If you wanted to shield your child from anything that's R rated. You surely wouldn't give them a Bible, you hypocrites. I'm talking to you women out there who often criticize my content. You would not give your child the Bible if you're trying to shield them from that which is R-rated. Why? Because if that child opened that Bible and read through the pages, he or she would be shocked at the content that's in that Bible. There's stories about sex, there's stories about murder, nocturnal emissions and sperm dripping. There's a story in there where a woman was raped all night long by a bunch of men, left on the doorstep. Uh, of all, uh, and, and in the morning, the husband opened the door and there she was. And then what did what did he do? He he took a, a knife and cut her in twelve pieces, and FedEx her body parts to the twelve tribes of Israel. Come on, R.J. Fleming, you know. It's too many stories in here, like that. If you're trying to shield your child from the R-rated content of Sir Walter Jones, and don't. Read the Song of Songs, which we call the Song of Solomon. You're gonna see, you're gonna see body parts, breasts, and all, and all kind of uh, uh, what they call double entendres about going down south, eating of the nectar, and all that. That's Fifty Shades of Grey, the Song of Solomon. You're a hypocrite. You want to shield the the saints from the Sir Walter Jones show. And the children are getting much worse when they turn this off and go outside. They are getting worse, worse, 10 times worse. Just turn on Larry Reed and you will get worse. And what the church is, it does is they're guilty is they like to shield the children from content like did they shield them well now let's talk about that somewhere else at some other time let's go in the basement talk about that let's not let the children listen to that and then the kids go to school and hear some of the most raunchiest stuff and you don't go up to the school and check to see what's going on over there no you don't you said now nah, now nah, let's let's just shield them from that now they shouldn't watch the sir walter jones content and the world be raping them with information their iPads, they just, you and you sleep at night and they're in their bedroom watching some of the most salacious stuff that will make you vomit. But when it comes to my content, ah, uh, please get that Bible out of their hand if you want to shield them. So I'm, t I'm talking to the brothers. Brothers, a woman will climax while her husband is in her. And she's got you on her mind. I'm talking to you, especially you content creators. You on her mind. And if she can't achieve this climax, 
She's going to grab her vibrator. She got one. And she's going to masturbate to your content. To a your, her favorite male content creator or her favorite actor. Brothers, I need you to know that. Your wife is doing that. You never have to tell me how to talk to a woman. People say, be careful, Walter. Be careful what you say to you because you never have to tell Sir Walter Jones how to talk to a woman. I invented the game of cat and mouse. I invented that game. Paul said you he would literally have to leave the world in order to avoid sinners. Likewise, I would literally have to uh, 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 leave the world in order to avoid women who I know who are after me. I, I invented the game. I wrote the book. I got seven books that will be completed by the end of the year. Trust me. So every woman I have ever dated had this big problem with me. You know what that problem is? I've never been the kind of man who needed to talk to you every day. Not me. I don't want to talk to you every day. No. I want to miss you. If I ain't talked to you in three days, don't worry. Just wait. I'm meshing this in to some of the impatience of some of the silly women out there. Because brothers, you might be dealing with them right now. That's why you can't do nothing with that woman until that man, that prophet, come to town. She's impatient. Brothers, Women will take your every syllable to heart because she's an incubator. She'll take every syllable, every jot and tittle to heart and she will file that sucker away. And if you are making general statements in a public arena like I'm making right now, she will mostly take it personal. You better hear me. She will take that personal. And when you see her again, if you talk to her again, or if you marry to her, she going to question you. Why'd you say that? You must have been talking about me. Jesus had the same problem with the disciples. Jesus said at the dinner table, somebody is about to betray him. And they all say, hey, is it, is it me? Is it me? Is it me? Is it me? Your woman going to ask the question, is it me? Why? Because she's an incubator and she processes everything. She keeps everything like a Ziploc bag and she grows everything because she incubates. She will keep your sperm. She has a Monica Lewinsky spirit. And she's going to literally try and trap you with something. And while you having sex with this woman, she's going to pull you in when you say, I'm getting ready to. And she's going to hold you down so that she, you can produce sperm inside of her so she can capture something. Let me tell you, I wrote the game of cat and mouse. I know how the game is played. I talk to too many brothers who tell me their stories. I talk to too many women who tell me their stories on how they entrap these brothers. And so do we see this in the scriptures? We sure do. Let's go to the scriptures since y'all ask. Proverbs 6 and 24 is a good place to start. Y'all weren't ready for this, were you? I don't care if you were ready or not. I'm going to give it to you. I gave you the disclaimer. You can leave now if you like. Look at this right here. It will keep you from the immoral woman. This right here. For their command is a lamp and their instruction is a lamp. He's he talking about wisdom and, and the protection and on and on. It will keep you from the immoral woman, from the smooth tongue of a promiscuous woman. He ain't talking about a man here. He's talking about a woman, which is something you rarely see it here in the church today. It's all about that man. The mother mayhem was always talking about some, uh, no. be careful, ladies. Brothers, keep your pants zipped. Keep your pants up. I was often called a Kojic pimp and a player and all this stuff. Keep this up. Keep that up. Getting your brothers, you need to you need, need, need do this. Until I finally had to tell Mother Mayhem, Mother Mayhem, listen, 
I'm tired of you rebuking me for something you think I'm doing, but your your daughter is a hoe. Ah! Y'all heard my story. Mother man, I'm using different names to protect the innocent. She wasn't innocent then. Your daughter is a hoe. Hell <gasps> Jones. No, 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 Jones, me. Every time you get up, you're talking about the brothers this and the musicians that, and, and they just, they, 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 uh, this and that. You, you put all these names in there. But it's your daughter. Every time after service, she's the one following me to my car. She's the one that put her phone number in my pocket. She's the one that put her hotel key in my pocket. She's the one that calling me at one o'clock in the morning. Your daughter is a hoe. And I'm tired of you, you, you mothers always pointing the fingers at the brother. Takes two to tangle. Teach your, your daughter to be chaste. And she wouldn't have to put up with a pimp like me. She's a hoe. Ah! You keep screaming all you want to. I'm trying to tell you the truth. That's why you a grandmama five times. With four different men. She's a hoe. From the smooth tongue of a promiscuous woman. Don't lust for her beauty. Y'all gorgeous. Don't let her coy glances seduce you. Brothers, I'm talking to you. For a prostitute will bring you to what? Poverty. You're going to be broke. I wrote the book. That Lola right there. And that's uh, Lilith. They both hoes and prostitutes. They seem decent. They got a dwelling. They got a job, maybe. But you're going to be impoverished with that kind of woman. She's coming after something. Ask me how I know. But sleeping with another man's wife will cost you your life. Ask me that. How I know. <laughs> now I'm still alive today, but by the grace of God. By the grace of God. Because her husband walked in. Well, in the hotel while I was with his wife. Ask me how I know. Well, I'm telling you how I know. And my heart dropped and I saw my life flash before my eyes. This is how I know about this scripture here. This one right here, I can testify to this one. I didn't write this one, but I sure know about it. Y'all better tell your pastors to be honest. Be transparent. They ain't telling y'all the truth. They ain't telling y'all about their life because they always want to be up, up here, up an echelon with y'all. But no, I breaks it down. I'm going to tell y'all, I was nasty. Can a man scoop a flame into his lap and not have his clothes catch on fire? Can he walk on hot coals and not blister his feet? So it is with the man who sleeps with another man's wife he who embraces her will go unpunished. Now this right here, I wish y'all would study this one because I'm looking for my pen because it go into some crazy stuff here. Excuses might be found for a thief. Now listen, a thief got it better. A thief got it better. Mm -hmm. A thief got it better. Who steals because he's starving. But if he is caught, he must pay back seven times what he stole. Even if he has to sell everything in his house. But the man who commits adultery is an utter <laughs> a fool, for he destroys himself. He will be wounded, disgraced. His shame will never be erased. For the woman's jealous husband will be furious, and he will show no mercy when he takes revenge. He will accept no, compa no compensation nor be satisfied with a payoff of any kind, the husband pretty much wants death. A thief got it better. Thief got it much better. I'm going to tell you all something else very shocking, brothers. Penetration. Let's talk about penetration. Penetration activates personalities in the woman. 
You're like, I know that. Really? You don't act like you know that. Go ahead. Keep having sex. Or have sex at one time. Y'all gonna be friends for 10 years. As soon as you penetrate her, it activates a personality in her. Seinfeld, which is one of my favorite shows, TV shows, Jerry Seinfeld and Elaine Bennis were best friends with the other two. They were friends for a couple seasons until they decided to have sex. And for the rest of the season, the eight, nine seasons, this woman was trying to date other men. He was trying to date other men. Spoiler alert. But she has, she always felt something for Jerry. Always. And it wasn't until about the ninth season, I think it was ninth, it was, uh, Xavier, I think it was ninth season, not ten, I think it was nine. One day, that very last episode, when the plane was getting ready to fall, they thought it was getting ready to die. She said, it's something I've always wanted to tell you. What? I, I, I love, and then the plane got better, got, got right, that is, and then he was like, what? Oh, oh nothing. I, I love that shirt you have on. She's always been in love with Jerry Seinfeld. Jerry never said it, though. Why? Because the man can penetrate you and walk away and forget who he penetrated. A woman is an incubator. Y'all better, you weren't ready for this, were you? You, you, you really weren't ready for this, were you? Well, I'm, we already in here. We in here, y'all. So there's an old saying. And I'm going to tell you, brothers, don't break the seal. Because if you break it, you own it. Did you hear me? If you break the seal, you own it. That's what they told you when you went into a store and you broke the china. If you break it, you own it. If you break the seal, you own it. You understand? And all of her problems will become yours. When she's sick, you sick. When she poke, you poke. You understand? When she's angry, mm, that's your problem. Come on, Ann. You bought it. It's yours. Even a woman you never met nor ever spoke to brothers if she like you she gonna claim you and she will block other women from getting to you or too close y'all tired of me yet because hmm. i'm getting ready to tell y'all something that happened last year just a few weeks ago and the person is watching right now. I know you are. Uh, because I'm going to go to Second Timothy in a minute. But there is a bunker who received a phone call from someone. That someone is watching right now. And this innocent new bunker from a foreign land. I gave you all of the continents here so you can pick and choose. Got a phone call from one of the watchers of my show. And they found her number, I don't know, through Facebook or they did something. They disguised their voice. And then put fear in that girl and told her, you can watch his show, but you can't comment. Just be quiet and sit there like a good little girl because Walter is taken. She was threatened by the person who's watching right now. So she reached out to me, frantic, Crying, 
scared, bewildered, looking over her shoulder, wondering, are they here? Are they tapping the phones? Are they checking your messages, Brother Jones? Now, that happened weeks ago. I didn't say nothing. And I said, let me tell you something, young lady. Here's what you need to do with that. Because I'm, I'm, on, I'm, a, I'm in a rebuking mood right now. Here's what you need to do with that. She said, what? As she was wiping her tears, I said, nothing. You continue to post. You continue to comment like nothing ever happened. You keep coming to the Tuesday night Bible studies. And if you need to raise your hand, raise your hand, ask questions, be vocal, do everything that you were doing. Because if you don't, if you stop, that person and the devil won. She says, okay, I will continue. And she wiped her tears. And the next day, she went back to commenting. She, went, she came to the Tuesday night Bible study, and she continued to do, and she started to feel better. Because hot coals were being poured on that person who told her, shut up, you can't comment. Why? Because that person saw this woman as a threat. Brothers, I'm talking to you. There's a woman out there who believe that they have all the control in the world over your life. Y'all, if I would tell y'all the things I go through, so y'all can say, beware all you want to. I would literally have to leave the earth to dodge women like that. But I know how to handle them. You best believe that. I got a long, extensive record of handling that just right. Second Timothy chapter three talks about these silly women. Silly women. Because it's a whole bunch of them in church. <clears throat> right here. Let's find it. The dangers of the last days is what we see now. You should know this, Timothy, that in the last days there will be very difficult times. For people will only will uh, love only themselves and their money. They will be boastful, proud, scoffed with God, scoffing, disobedient to parents, ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. They will be unloving and unforgiving. They will slander others and have no self-control. They will be cruel and hate what is good. Hate it. What is good? That's what we saw in that phone call. They will betray their friends. That's what I saw. Reckless. Puffed up with pride and love pleasure rather than God. They will act religious. Person made the phone call and then went back to acting religious. But they will reject the power that could make them godly. Stay away from people like that. They are the kind who work their way into people's homes and win the confidence of vulnerable women. That was the attempt right there. Silly women. who are burdened with the guilt of sin and controlled by various desires. Such women are forever following new teachings. That's why y'all go after these prophets, you silly women. You're going after these good-looking, debonair, charismatic men on social media, following after their new teachings, and they're baffling you. They're telling you, now, here's what the Bible says. You know, they, got this, they just got a nice little cute way of talking and you just moved in because you women are usually attracted by the audio sounds of a man it's just all the see he just sound listen to how he sounds she's pulled into that mess and then he grabs you and you walk away crying because you got pulled into that silly but they are never able to understand the truth these teachers oppose the truth just as janice and jambers oppose moses they have depraved minds and counterfeit faith. But they won't get away with this for long. 
Somebody, I'm sorry, someday everyone will recognize what fools they are just as these two brothers here. One day, you will be recognized. Mm. You will be recognized because women have what y'all may call intuition. Unfortunately, many of you use your intuition to try and entrap a man and destroy him. You better hear me. I'm giving y'all some brotherly and fatherly advice. The Lord has given you that gift, that talent, has put that, that, that innate thing inside of you, ladies, so that you can build up the household of faith, not to capture somebody who's in something and then destroy him. Why aren't you using that to, to intercede? to pray for the brother, to speak some life into him. I know some brothers don't want to listen, but you, you can't just stop just because your man ain't listening. Take some of these young men under your wings and pour into them some womanly, motherly, sisterly, or whatever, advice, auntie advice, and intercede on their behalf. That intuition that you got, you're always trying to find out what drawer he, he put the girl's phone number. You're always trying to go into his phone, trying to figure out, look through his, his photos and all that stuff. If you're spending all that time trying to trip him in some, first of all, why are you even with the brother? All right, I know men change over time, but you're spending all that time trying to trap him into something because of your intuition when you need to just sit down or go for a walk and say, listen, I don't want to be that girl. So the Lord has given me this gift. I already know something's going on. So let me just pray for you and turn it over to the Lord instead of trying to trap him in some kind of dirt. Because when you do, what you going to do with him now? And you remind me of the dog that every time I got in the car and drove down a certain neighborhood, that dog in that certain house would run after my car. I'm driving down the, the, the neighborhood going 20 miles an hour. And I said to myself one day, I'm going to stop this car and see what that dog going to do when I stop the car. I stopped the car. And the dog, what? Okay, now what? What you want to do, dog? Because your, your bark is worse than your bite. What you want to do? Come on, bust a move, dog. I mean, what you going to do when you catch the man? Huh? What? You gonna dismiss him? All right. Now you got somebody. You got a center man out there, just out there. But yet you go. You got some of y'all got jail ministry. Y'all go from y'all go on the street corners. Y'all feed the hungry. Y'all y'all go to some of these women's shelters and 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 you try to help these people. But the, the but the one that's in your you say get get out of here because it's personal. <sighs> mm. I don't know, boy. I don't know. Sh should I have gone down this road? Yes, Lord. Yes, I should have. But they are never able to understand the truth. Mm -hmm. I told my husband we were dating. I'm not CSI. I ain't doing all that. If I have to do all that, don't need to be with you. So what's you going to do? All right, that's silly women. Let's talk about hypocrites. I was at a restaurant. See if I can find the picture. And this is this is this is where I I um I saw this I saw this picture and I said, "You know what? That's a message right there." I was at the uh what they call it, Macaroni Company or something like that. Cute little restaurant, had all of the noodles. Uh, no, it was called Noodles Company. I don't know. Macaroni Noodles Company. Y'all know what it is, all right? And I went in to order a, a little a, a noodle something. And they uh, passed me a cup and one of these straws, okay? The straws obviously uh, is a, a not plastic paper because of the recycling. And I look at this cup 
in, in the straw and I said, you know what? This picture right here is straight hypocrisy. This is straight hypocrisy. Why? Because the straw is recyclable. But what is the cup? <laughs> it's like being half pregnant. The straw is smaller than the, the big content in which the cap is plastic. You know, and so it's like, couldn't you find some type of paper, plastic? Uh, I know water and liquids don't go through paper that great, but it went through that straw. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I thought, you know what? Message, I want to talk about hypocrisy amongst you all. Because I was, uh, every time I... I, I do a show, especially when it comes around Christmas time. And I say, Merry Christmas, and I'll talk about getting some toys for the grandbabies, what have you. You all get carried away with Jesus wasn't born on the 25th of December. We know that. We know that. And I have discovered that some of y'all, especially the women, because it's usually the women, yours, you are so deep in your belief that when people see you, they go the other way. So instead of enjoying the content, instead of commenting on that which the scripture, instead of become, you know, and just saying praise the Lord for the word, you went right into the the Christmas thing, and that was your only comment. <laughs> and I said, Lord have mercy. What are some of the things that this person is doing that is very paganistic? And man, did I find some things. Some of you are so hypocritical, you don't even realize that you are. Big hypocrites. You don't even realize. You tell us what we can't do, and then you go home and do not just that, that, but sometimes you do the worst. I asked my staff to come up with a list of things that people do, uh, these hypocrites. Saints who proceed in giving marital advice when their own marriages are torn up. You in a pulpit. Especially if you're a pastor and first lady, and y'all and y'all giving all this wonderful marriage, marriage advice, and y'all don't even like each other, or preaching against addiction, or consumption, or some kind of hidden sin, when the person is visibly morbid, obese. You're so morbidly obese that you can't stand up to preach. You, they got to sit you down in the chair. How many of y'all have seen that? And I literally walked into church. A man was sitting there. He had to have been about 500 pounds. He had to sit down and preach and telling y'all how unhealthy y'all are. And I said, Lord, have mercy. How could you be telling these people that they shouldn't be smoking and drinking and doing riotous living and smoking weed and doing all this stuff is unhealthy for the body, blah, blah, blah. Come on in and try to have an altar call when you are literally eating yourself to death. And I do know for a fact that there are some who are the exception to the rule because there's some people who eat one meal and blow up. I ain't talking about you. You got thyroid issues. I ain't talking about you. I'm talking about the ones that I know for a fact who are eating themselves to death. And they're preaching to you about your unhealthy lifestyle. Another one. Speaking on the love of Christ. His new commandment of love when a person is unable to extend a hand to uh, the disenfranchised. 
and will not even consider putting himself in an uncomfortable situation to save the life of another. The love of Christ this, the love of Christ that. And you walk out of your church in your car and drive home. You ain't rescuing nobody. Or presenting yourself as a virtuous woman. When amongst the saints, uh, when amongst the saints, but your, your Facebook profile pictures. And trust me, if you have my account, you will see the things I have to wake up to every morning. I have to go to, on a block party, you know, because I got to block this person because of the stuff I be saying. You come across as being virtuous, but on your Facebook pictures, you have all kind of scandalous. The content on your page reflects nothing but the world. And you talking about me? And you talking about how virtuous you are? And you you are church speaking in tongues and praying for folks and spitting and slobbing and, and foaming at the mouth and he did did I see see and I and I look on your Facebook wall and say what? You posted that? A woman came after me for saying Merry Christmas and you know you know that's, that's pagan shame on you. And then you wanted her wall and she had a quote from Buddha. Confucius said, and I said, what? I told you about the woman who I was trying to date, and she, I, we want, I was hungry. We wanted to go to a, go to a, I wanted to go to a restaurant, a Chinese restaurant, and she said, we are never going to a Chinese restaurant because they worship Buddha. Y'all heard the story over and over again. We worship, they worship Buddha. I'm like, I, I'm not about Buddha. I just, I just want to eat the food. She says, I don't, mm mm. And I was silent until I realized what car I was riding in. And I said, hey, where was this car made? Um, um, I, I, don't, I don't know. I bought it up the street. I said, yeah, but it wasn't, it wasn't created up the street. And I turned Google on. I said, this thing was made in China. Well, I didn't know when I bought the car. Oh, really? You've been driving Buddha how long? Three years now? Three said three. You own this car three years. You've been driving Buddha around. Buddha has presented you a ride back and forth. <laughs> we went to another restaurant. Y'all heard the story, but we got new bunkers joining us all the time. Right? So I got to repeat stories. Your pastor repeat stories. We went to a restaurant, got the food, brought it to her house, put it on the table. I opened up the bag, put the food, put my plate. Uh, I asked her for a plate, that is. To put my food on the plate to put it in the microwave and when she gave me the plate i turned the plate upside down hey what this say made in china oh thank you put my food on the plate took it over to the microwave opened the door to the microwave i said wait let me turn the microwave over first what what they say about in the microwave and made in china oh, okay and pass me some silverware please because i don't eat with plastics anybody know me uh, and I said, oh, thank you for this fork. Mm, let me turn this around. Oh, what did that say? Your whole house is Buddha. Buddha has supplied all your needs according to his excellent grace and mercy. You all are hypocrites. Merry Christmas. Mm -hmm. You say you are the lover of God's word, but you won't come to Bible study because Larry Reed is discussing how he used to suck peen on his Patreon page and you don't want to miss it. He says peen. You don't want to come to the So Walter Jones Bible study because peen, you heard Larry Reed. Constantly chastening and condemning your fellow brother for his outward sin when you both are struggling. Rearranging scriptures to fit your circumstances and your agendas. Miss me with that, you hypocrites. Now let's talk about the fake prophets since I'm on a roll today. I've got some tea here. I do, I, I got some tea here. I do want to warm up. All right, I do want to warm it up. But before I warm this tea up, I want to introduce some of you who are new to what the the mess we went through in 2020 with all these fake evangelicals. We're talking about how Trump is going to be the next president or he's going to uh, renew his agreement with America by going back into the White House. 
and y'all went crazy. And it wasn't just white evangelicals. A couple blacks were sprinkled in there as well. Oh, y'all was in there. Here are, here are the fake folks. Pat Robinson, Sid Roth, Roth was, the, was the Barbara Walters of all of these because he put them all together on his show. That's a, a, a miracle. That's, I call it that's entertainment pretty much, but it was that supernatural or some mess. Paula White, mm, 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 she called an African angels. Kenneth Copeland, Terry Pearsons, George uh, Pearsons, uh, Hank Kuhneman, Lord have mercy, Mark Burns, y'all know him, black brother, who walked out of his own office while CNN was interviewing him, and he walked out of his own church. Jeremiah Johnson, in whom I do, did respect later when he did apologize. Marcus Rogers, play him in a minute. Keenan, the black brother, who still makes my skin crawl. Dana Coverstone, who had a dream. So tired of y'all's dreams. And he talked about how Russia was going to have boots on the ground here by November. Up 20, was that 2020? And scared all y'all. He got a million hits on that. I'm preaching the gospel, y'all. I'm teaching and preaching and going crazy and sweating, blood, sweat, and tears. And, ah, and I'm just, I'm, oh man, I'm just preaching hard. And he comes on here and say, I had a dream that Russia's coming. And all y'all say, ah! Start preparing your houses and going out there and buying up water and, and baby diapers and toilet paper. And just y'all just went crazy because this this brother I almost said a I almost said a name. I almost lost my religion. Said he had a he had a dream. Man, I'm telling you, y'all fall, especially you silly women. When a man say he or a woman say I had a dream. Y'all run. I can't wait to read Jeremiah. because I'm getting ready to read it to y'all in just a minute. Hold your horses because ain't nothing new under the sun. He had millions of people and the secular industry, uh, newscasters was interviewing him. So if I want to get a million, million subscribers tonight, all I got to say is I got a dream. And soak y'all in. So here's another one. Todd White, Kevin Zaday, Kim Clement, who's dead. Been dead for years, but he's still prophesying. That's like uh, that's like Tupac releasing another album. After he died, he was releasing albums every year. Brian Kahn. God help me with that one. Troy Black. Mario Murillo. Lou Engel, Kurt Laundry, Larry Sparks, Johnny and Elizabeth Inlaw, Di Donna Partow, Parto, I don't know, Tracy, C I know all their faces. Tracy Cook, Robert Henderson, Mark Taylor, Rod Parsley is sprinkled in there, Stephen Furtick. All of these folks here are on your screen and y'all ran to these this messology. Saying amen, amen, amen. And they got millions of subscribers because they had a dream. And I can't get y'all to come to Bible study because I didn't have a dream. Well, I just told y'all I had several dreams. I'm just not going to tell y'all all my dreams. That's between me and God. And the ones I tell y'all is because God want me to tell you because I don't want to get puffed up. That's why Paul said, God, hey, remove this thing from me. God says, I ain't removing nothing. What's wrong with you? Is not my grace sufficient for you? No, I ain't removing nothing. But Satan, he buffeted me. Okay, well, he's supposed to do that. That's his job. So in 2020, this is the mess we had to put up with as I go get some tea. I'll be back. The Lord, Joe Biden don't need to be president. And just like this, just like if you'd answered me, he said he won't. Will President Trump, from what God is showing you, win his second term? 
Uh, yes, it is, is for sure, uh, Sid, that God wants uh, President Trump in. God has already sealed the results of this election. He has sealed it in heaven. Tracy, is President Trump going to have a second term? Well, it's the same thing, similar to Kevin, yes. I want to say without question, Trump is going to win the election. Trump will win. He will be president of the United States. He will sit in that office for four more years, and God will have his way in this country. The Lord said to me, I am going to give your president a second win. Whoa! In the third dream, he said, I need for you to be my running mate for my second election. And the Lord said, because what I intend to do through him, it will take two terms to do. And I need for you to run with him in the spirit to see that everything is removed out of the way that would hinder that so that he is not only finishes this term, but is reelected for the second term and can fulfill the mandates of God upon his life. You said this one that I shall raise up from New York. I will give him two terms. God's in control. He controls everything, and I believe that involves Donald Trump being president for the next four years. Will it be an eight-year presidency? Absolutely. Absolutely, we will. Uh, you're sure about that? Yeah, I'm sure about that. Joe Biden is not the president-elect. He never will be the president of the United States. I'm telling you, I promise you, with full, complete assurance and opinionated authority, Donald Trump won by a landslide. Quit freaking out. Quit fretting. I'm betting the farm on this one. Lord, if it be your will and if it be necessary, another election, another voting day, whatever it takes under your kingdom, oh God, to bring it all in line, bring it all in line, bring it all in line with the will of God. We must not let the devil have the inheritance of this country. The angel of the Lord is going to go forth for America. Why? Because the president can't fight now. You get what I'm saying? He can't do it, so the Lord is sending his angel. Paula White King, that woman has spiritual insight. Her angels have even been dispatched from Africa right now. Africa right now. Africa right now. From Africa right now. They're coming here. They're coming here. In the name of Jesus from South America. They're coming here. They're coming here. They're coming here. They're coming here. From Africa. From South America. Angelic forces. Angelic reinforcement. Angelic reinforcement. Angelic reinforcement. Pika hata anda ata ora bata rata ande eke eke manda rasata. The Lord says, Son of man, prophesy unto Wisconsin that it will go red for Trump. Prophesy unto Michigan that it will go red for Trump. Prophesy unto Pennsylvania that it goes red for Trump. Prophesy unto North Carolina that it goes red for Trump. Wow. Prophesy unto Georgia that it goes red for Trump. Prophesy unto Nevada that it goes red, red for Trump. Prophesy that the media will cancel the assignment to, to call the election. The Fox News decision desk can now project that former Vice President Joe Biden will win Pennsylvania and Nevada, putting him over the 270 electoral votes he needs to become the 46th president of the United States. I really want to apologize, sincerely apologize, for missing the prophecy about Donald Trump. Uh, I prophesied um, that Donald Trump would be president. And then later on, I prophesied that he would um, not be impeached and the fact that he would win another term. And I was completely wrong. It doesn't make me a false prophet. The Associated Press said that Joe Biden is president. Ha! 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 Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's gonna be president. Mickey Mouse is gonna be king. Yeah. Uh -huh. All right. Hey, what did I miss? Hmm. What did I did I miss anything? I I had to go and eat some tea. Hmm. Hmm. What I miss? Um. 
let's talk about these particular people here. Now, Larry Reed <laughs> posted something here and people send me stuff, all right? Here. Until we begin to wake ourselves up as a people, until we begin to realize that the, the colonizers left us feeling inferior, supremacy, white supremacy was introduced from the very onset when the colonizers came to Africa, we were taught to believe that everything African was bad, everything European was better. Christianity demonized African spirituality. We were colonized through the very same Bible we're supposed to be taking in and saying we have found Jesus. Christ is about the level of consciousness. Christ is the one who says, when I say I am the way, the truth, and the, and the, and the life, what does he say later on? Who is God's name? How do we refer to God the great I am? Jesus. Who is a dead man who does not exist amongst us? So African spirituality, hold on, Jackie. African spirituality, because this is what I say to pastors, right? When they say only through Jesus and no, we don't speak to the dead. I'm like, your assumption is we are speaking to the dead. We are speaking to the spirit of our ancestors. Because in African spirituality, the body dies, but the spirit goes to live on. Hence, they say energy never dies, it transforms. That's what science is telling us. So African spirituality is dead. 100%. Until we be silly women. She talked about the colonization. Got it. Africa. Got it. Using the Bible to manipulate truth. Got all of that. Spiritualization, using that as an excuse for you know stuff that y'all do that y'all don't realize you're doing, especially down in New Orleans and other places around the country and around the world, especially in African nations. It's talking to spirits. Mm -hmm. I'm not surprised that. Anything that this woman said, even the fact that she said that you, you, you all are talking to a dead man, Jesus Christ being dead. And then the boy whom, whom y'all always watch, you love him, replied to that and agreed with her messology. That's y'all's brother Reed. He agreed with you all. And I, I know that here, here's what Reed says, okay? This person here, Redeem, said, y'all go ahead uh, talking to dead folks. I'm going to pass on that. That's what this person said. Brother Reed responded and said, FYI, the body of Jesus, who was God in the flesh, is dead only his spirit is alive, which is why we pray, baptize, and etc. in his name. You're already talking to the dead. That is from the man in whom y'all call your pastor. I keep telling y'all this man is not saved. <laughs> I keep telling y'all this man is not a Christian. He does not represent Christianity. But by the thousands, you all flock to him for spiritual advice. And he told y'all, he keeps telling y'all every week, I am not a believer. He tells you that every week. And then these silly women in the comment section flocking to his every whim, every word. That's why he decided to open up an OnlyFans um, profile. Why? He's telling y'all in your face, I'm not a believer. He literally said, Christ's body is dead. Last we checked in the word, he rose. Not his spirit just rose. They went to the tomb. Y'all remember that, right? Hmm. Y'all remember that? I came in to put some spices on uh, Brother Jesus, and where is he? Did y'all take him? Now, he ain't here. He ain't here. He has arisen. Well, where is his body? Lord have mercy. And then that same body shows up and shows himself to the disciples, Mary and, and uh, to, to, to the women first, and then to the disciples one was doubting his body did 
and it was in a glorified state. How could somebody who y'all call your pastor say something like that so egregious and y'all still flock to him for spiritual advice? I'm a son, I am amazed at that. It's simple theology. And the women say, I, I get it, you're right, I understand it now. Thank you, Pastor. Now where's your OnlyFans? Because I want to get dirty. I want to I want to ju- I want to juke <laughs> ancestry worship and witchcraft and these Black Panther movies got people out here wearing that shiki skirts wanting to move or <laughs> <laughs> Come on. I mean, I nothing surprises me today. All right, and then here's most stuff about the Trump prophecies. All right, y'all, y'all boys, in in they're in deep form. Here, here's Brother Mark. The second election, I never said God told me Trump was going to win. That's why nobody has a video. Now, what I did say is I feel like he's going to win again. That's what I feel in my spirit. And I told Pete, and I was clear on that. I said, I just feel this is what I think. Right? And so the Lord told me, and so the Lord told me, and so the Lord told me, the second election, I never said God told me Trump was going to win. Clear as day this morning. All right? And you guys can pray about this. And this is what I feel in my spirit. This is what I feel he showed me. And And if I'm wrong, I'm praying that God just corrects me and shows me what it is, why I'm missing it. But I've been praying about it and nothing has changed. I still believe that Trump is going to win. And so he showed me that this morning. And so he showed me that this morning. So they said, well, Trump, Trump didn't win. I still believe that Trump is going to pull this thing out. And yes, I'm saying that. And I know I've gotten so many stones thrown at me. But either one or two things are going to happen. Either Brother Marcus is just completely crazy and God is not speaking to me and God is not speaking to me and everything in my life up to this point has been an accident. Our God is speaking to me. Our God is speaking to me. Mm. Then he he tried to backtrack it. All the prophets try to backtrack and say, no, no, here's what I really said. And everybody on that list that I said, all these fake prophets, they all are were wrong on not just the Trump prophecies, but on a whole lot of other prophecies, and they backtrack it. And you all pay big money to go see these men and women sprinkled in there. Yes, you do. That shoe fits many of y'all. And then in walks Prophet Lovey. Prophet Lovey is clever. He's not the worst of prophets. He's not the best of prophets. He is just like all the rest of them. He's like all of them. I studied this man. It took me three days to study him because someone, several people, first one person sent me a video of him a perp, uh, uh, supposedly turning a baby in a woman's belly who's breached. He He laid hands on her, spent a lot of time with her, and turned the belly. Let me tell y'all something. The government is getting ready to get sick and tired of getting sick and tired of you faith healers, miracle workers, and prophets doing dangerous things in church. They're coming after y'all. Mark my words. Remember this day, this post, this hour, this live show. The government eventually is going to come up in this church and they're going to start pulling y'all down. All kind of lawsuits, all kind of imprisonments, all kind of, I'm telling you, fines and restrictions and pulling licenses and, and revoking this. I'm telling you. The government is coming after y'all for doing dangerous things in church and saying that's God. When I showed that video to a couple, a doctor and a nurse, they was like, oh, my God, do you know how dangerous that is? And the girl on the microphone lied 
about the, the hospital turning her away because her belly was too big. I, I, I showed that to a nurse. She said, Walter, you believe that mess? I work in a hospital. No hospital that I know would ever turn her away because of she said, that belly can get so, have you ever seen a big, fat, obese person? Huh? Huh? Did the, did the belly ever burst? <laughs> I'm sick of these men and these women. I'm really sick of them, and I'm most sick of you women who are flocking to this. That video was sent to me several times. And if the shoe fit, because again, some of y'all are going to take this personal when I said, silly women, you're going to take it personal. So he's lovey, because Dre Day, he, he owned it, Dre's, used to come over here to the show <laughs> right here i know what i'm seeing i am not a fake prophet and i'm not a psychic they can't do what i'm doing and i'm not a modern day prophet either me i'm like the ones you read in the old testament do you know anything like william not william listen to me i don't miss okay this will be my test okay Help me, Holy Spirit. Do you know anyone called Sarah? No. Listen to me. I don't miss. He's like reading. An evangelist or something like that. Listen to me. I don't miss. Man of God, I don't know who this woman is. Listen to me. I don't miss. I can prophesy off. Maybe I get 99 correct, one off. They will say false prophet. Yet the Bible says no. If a prophet speaks, it does not come to pass. Know that the prophet has spoken presumptuously. God has not spoken. He did not say he's a false prophet. He said he's just speaking from his mind. He did not speak from the mind of God. But today, if you say something that is off, yet showing that you're human, you are false. No, that's not what it means. But because people don't rightly divide the word, yet it is written there, they won't see it. They'll bring up their yeah, false prophets. That's not how it works. We are humans, we can miss it. Listen to me, I don't miss. We are humans, we can miss it. Have any of you ever seen in the scriptures that any of God's prophets missed it. And the prophets are going to take you to some places. You should, I'm going to have, I'm doing a part two to the show, by the way. I'm going to have Corey Miner on the show this coming week from the Smart Christian Show. He's already confirmed. We're going to do a part two on this, on how prophets use the mist the accusation of the mist and they'll go to the text to try and show y'all what they mean by the mist. All right. I've never seen a prophet of God miss. Never. Today's prophets are doing the same thing. False prophets in the scriptures did the very same thing. The very one, because they can't do the same thing that God's prophets did they never missed mm. so i'm gonna have him on and we're gonna talk about this yes we are mm. because if god is telling me to tell some people something and he's telling me how could i miss And God says, I got to kill the prophet. I got to kill him. He's got to die. I'm going to take, I'm, I'm going to some scriptures, y'all. Mm -hmm. I'm going to some scriptures. I will say this one thing here, Philippians 1.15, which can apply to some people who are preaching the gospel. None of these guys who I played 
this apply to? I don't think so. I don't. No. Right here, he, Paul's joy that Christ is being preached. He said, it's true that some are preaching out of jealousy and rivalry. None of these guys are pre preaching out of, out of what he's getting ready to say. Because they all are jealous, absolutely, and they all want to be better than the other. But others preach about Christ with pure motives. They preach because they love me, for they know I have been appointed to defend the good news. Those others do not have pure motives as they preach about Christ. Now, y'all like that? That seems like it applies to these men. Mm. They preach with selfish ambitions, not sincerity, intending to make my chains more painful to me. But that doesn't matter whether their motives are false or genuine the message about christ is being preached either way so i rejoice would you ever did you ever hear in any other place in the text in the bible anywhere where a real prophet like paul he was prophet too or god or any of the angels says i rejoice over false prophets hmm. have you ever seen that <laughs> which tells me that this text here don't apply to these other dudes right here. And I will continue to rejoice for I know that as you pray for me and the spirit of Jesus Christ helps me, this will lead to my deliverance. Somebody brought that up and that's why I brought it up. As a matter of fact, the flip side is going to happen because there are people who are prophesying and doing miracles on judgment day what is Jesus going to say to them hmm. what is Jesus going to say to them can you tell me because hmm? Elder JD disagree I don't even know why Elder JD disagree he said, read his comment. I'm going to have to find where his comment is. He disagreeing with someone's comment about the mouth. Who was that? Roger? What did Jesus say? There he is. He said, depart. I never knew you. He didn't rejoice. He didn't say what Paul said. I rejoice. No, I never knew you. Oh, here's JD's comment. I think sometimes God can be telling the prophet to say one thing and the prophet say it, but in the wrong term. It it's very important that you not only saw what God is saying, but say it exactly in his entirety, how he's saying it, not in your own way. Is that your final answer, Elder J.D.? And number two, is that person a prophet? Hmm? Is that person a prophet? Because God. So are you saying that God only speaks to a man or a woman who is considered a prophet? Hmm. So God can't talk to any of the other gifts of the Holy Spirit, those of you who have the gift. Is that what you're saying? Hmm? That he's always got to speak to these popular American prophets. And they can miss if they want to because they got a, a way out. Y'all gave them a way out. Well, he didn't speak plainly and expressively, or he might have missed a little word or phrase there. But y'all get the gist of it. That is Texas shooting. Mm. I just I just don't understand. America is Nazareth. America is Nazareth. Matthew 13, 58. Alright? I'm going long. Matthew 13, 58. America is Nazareth. Nazareth. I'm telling y'all. This America. You said you had to explain to you. Okay, you can explain. Not tonight, because after the show, I'm eating and going to bed. Don't call me tonight, y'all. All right, here. When Jesus had finished telling these stories and illustrations, he left the part of the country. He returned to his hometown. When he taught there in the synagogue, church, y'all, he taught in church. Everyone was amazed and said, where does he get this wisdom and the power to do miracles? Then he scoffed. They scoffed. He's just a carpenter's son. Don't they say that about y'all? They say that about me. 
That's just Walter. That's uh, Evelyn and Lawrence Cleveland Jones Jr.'s son. Mm. And we know Mary, his mother, his brothers, James and Joseph. We know Rodney, Larry, Michael, uh, Dwayne, David, Justin, Janina. We know all them. Simon and Judas, all his sisters live right here among them. Where did he learn how to do these things? How, how I saw a post where they said, he said, congratulations or happy new year from elder and pastor Walter Jones. When did he become a pastor? And they were deeply offended and refused to believe in him. They don't want to believe in me because they know my parents and my siblings. And they didn't seem, they didn't come to my pastoral uh, uh, celebration. Mm -hmm. Then Jesus told them what a prophet is honored everywhere except in his own hometown and among his own people. The bunkers know that the bunkers know it quite well, quite well. Y'all know it's a bold night for me and I don't give two dead flies. My church didn't receive me. The bunkers did. We were all together. And to some people at my own church, they thought I was a heretic. And this scripture came alive. Because the bunkers was used to my teaching and they checked the scriptures for themselves. They were more noble than many because they were like Bereans. Y'all think I'm scared? I'm be more bold in 2023. I don't care. So right here, a prophet is not honored except in his own, uh, every, ev everywhere it is, except in his own hometown and among his own friends. And so he did only a few miracles there because of their what? Unbelief. Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, with all that power in his hand, he could not do miracles at home. Why? Because they was trying to be too common with him. That's just little boy Jesus. Where did he get all his wisdom from, please? And Jesus' hands was tied, and he couldn't do miracles. America, y'all ain't seeing the miracles that y'all claim that you're seeing. Hands, limbs growing all out, and folks being raised from the dead. You ain't seeing that in America. Stop playing. Can God do it? Yes. Could he be doing it in some little places in America? Yes, but y'all ain't seeing it. Why? You don't believe. Rather you bring these prophets in, they lie to you, you believe the prophets who lie to you. Texas shooters. Sharp shooters. Mm-hmm. I'm talk I can I can only talk about America. I can't talk about these other places around the world where God could be uh, working. America, please. Y'all making that stuff up. Mm -mm, mm -mm. So somebody going to say, it, it's because you don't believe Elder Jones. Yes. I don't believe your words. <laughs> you talk presumptuously. All right, let's talk about healings and prosperity. Like, you want to talk about that? Because I've, I've really upset the 500 people that are here. I've really upset it in this, you. Let's talk about the healing. Healing. God can heal whoever he want to and when, whatever time he want to. And he can do something so miraculous if he plan on doing it. But every time a prophet walk into a building, he's always doing something miraculous. And he always do it within the confounds of your church. He never does it out. He never goes to go to the hospitals, the infirmaries, the orphans and the shelter. He never go. To, he always go to the church. Why? Because that's the marketplace. That's where he gets his money. And every time he got to lay, every time he lay hands on somebody, somebody they, they, they all of a sudden they healed. Everybody seems to be healed. It's a lie because healing does not always bring about even belief. People are not going to just believe because you heal them or people see, but they ain't believing. I'm sorry to tell y'all that. I got too much proof here in the scriptures. I got too much proof. Jesus did miracles. And 
it wasn't until he was feeding the people where the people start to follow him. And he said, y'all ain't here because I'm doing the miracles. He said, y'all here because you hungry. The rich man was in hell. Lazarus was in the bosom of Abraham. And the rich man told him, hey, go upstairs and warn my people. And the angel was like, mm-mm. They got Moses and the prophet. What makes you believe? think that they're going to believe me from coming from my, this place? They ain't going to believe if they see a miracle. They're not going to believe. Oh, blood. Ah, Jesus. So what I'm saying here is Jeremiah chapter 28 is a doozy. This one right here, this one right here, this right here is a doozy. Yeah, he never goes into the in, into the COVID wards and lay hands. As a matter of fact, he has a big sign on the front door for those with the virus, do not enter. Look at what Jeremiah told now. Let me tell you the story behind Jeremiah 28. Okay. In Isaiah chapter 1, read it tonight if you have a if you have chance. Isaiah chapter 1, God was rebuking Israel. He says, your, your skin is prettified. He says, away with all your new moons and your celebrations, your holy convocations and, and all your Sabbath days and all. Uh, he said, away, away, away with all of that, your ob oblations and you know, and it just just I just can't do it. I can't do it. I put my hand over my eyes. I just, I just don't want to see it. He said, he said, brothers, can we not reason together? And they, and he just couldn't take it anymore. So what he did, God didn't put a, a yoke of bondage around Israel's neck. And he kept it there and kept Israel in bondage. He was punishing his children. So Brian Song, Carnality, and all these other prophets, Lovey and the rest of them, came to town to prophesy to y'all who got a yoke on your neck. The yoke of the pandemic is on your neck. Jeremiah chapter 28 talks about Hananiah who does the same thing to the point where he almost tricked the major prophet, Jeremiah. Because I studied prophet Lovey, and I was like, wow, that boy, that, that boy good. That, that boy, that boy, he preaching. <laughs> prophet Lovey was preaching, y'all. Let me see if I'm fine. That's what I want to do. I want to just, I just want to, I want to applaud him. Prophet Lovey, man, you are preaching, man. He would take them words and he dissect the thing and give you the Greek and the Hebrew. And man, I'm like, boy, that boy good, that boy good. Jeremiah did the same thing. Can I read it to you? I know it's your bedtime. I know y'all got to go to work in the morning. I get it. All right. I'm going to read it to you because I told the clock keeper we're going long. One day in the late summer of that same year, the fourth year goes on, Hananiah. There's a couple of Hananiahs in the Bible, y'all know. Son of Azur, a prophet of Gibeon, addressed uh, me publicly in the temple while all the priests and the people listened. He said, this is what the Lord, ah, this is what the Lord of heaven's armies of God of Israel says. How many times have we heard this? Here's what the Lord says. Mm. I will remove the yoke. Oh, oh, look at that. Remove the yoke of the king of Babylon from your necks within two years. They always give me all a date. I will bring back all the temple treasures that Nebuchadnezzar carried off. I will bring back uh, Jehoiakim. All right, got to go to uh, Matthew, uh, another story. Son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah. I'll do all this stuff. This is what the Hananiah was saying to Jeremiah and the people. Jeremiah responded to Hananiah as they stood in front of all the people, the priests and the people. He said, what? Amen. Y'all, what does amen mean? Jeremiah. 
the major of major prophets said to this fake, Amen, brother. A to the man. May your prophecies come true. That's what I was saying to prophet uh, Levy. Man, that boy good. I hope the Lord does everything you say. I hope he does bring back the Babylonian treasures. But listen now to the solemn words I speak to you in the presence of all the people. The ancient prophets who preceded you uh, and me spoke against many nations, always a warning of war and disease and, and disaster. So a prophet, he gives them a warning. Jeremiah's like, okay, now, so a prophet who predicts peace must show he's right. Only when his predictions come true can we know that he is really from the Lord. Okay. Then Hananiah the prophet took the yoke. Ah. Here's what the prophets of America do now. They'll do something symbolic. Mm. Oh, give me that. Uh, go give me. It's like the price is right. Uh, uh, come on down. The price is right. Okay. What's in your purse? You have an egg in your purse? I do have an egg. Well, come on down. The price is right. That's what prophets do. They walk in the church and they do something symbolic. To you I'm in trouble I am in trouble can you address how an apostle pastor evangelist or teacher can teach or preach something that is erroneous but a prophet cannot speak wrong right yeah if any of your affirmation uh, gifts can get it wrong come on man a son you trying to get in trouble man yeah now he he now, Asan is a handsome young man, y'all, but he married. He happily married. Uh-uh, don't be inboxing him, okay? But, but check this out. Check this out, Xavier. Check this out. Because nothing new under the sun. Hananiah the prophet took the yoke of, of Jeremiah's neck and broke it in pieces, symbolically. And Hananiah said again, said again to the crowd that had gathered, this is what the Lord says, just as this yoke has been broken, within two years I will break the yoke of oppression from all of the nations now subject to King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. With that, Jeremiah left the temple area. He gone. Dismiss. Amen. Close the book. Uh-oh. Verse 12. Soon after this confrontation, Notice that word. With Hananiah, the Lord gave this message to Jeremiah. Uh-oh, look at that. I'm teaching this gospel here. Y'all better hang out. The Lord did not go talk to Hananiah, the fake prophet. The Lord went to your pastor who brought that fake prophet in. Do you understand? Wait a minute. You belong to me. You my child. When my father left the house, my kid, my my uh friends. I was young. Was jumping on the furniture, jumping up and down on the couch. Wee wee wee. My father came home early, and he caught one of the friends in midair as he opened up the door. My father said, "Okay, Walter, tell your friends they need to leave." Okay, y'all, y'all gotta go. Go home. They live home. And then my father took his belt off. Now I've got to beat you. Wop, wop. I'm like, wop, wop, wop. I'm not getting the beating. I wasn't jumping on the couch. My friends was jumping on the couch. Can y'all tell me why I got the beating? Hmm? Can y'all tell me why I got the beating? My friends didn't get the beating. I got the beating. They were free to go. I felt that was so unfair. Hmm, can y'all tell me why? Why I got the beating? Huh? Veronica says, so you brought him. Because you brought him. Candy says, you allowed it. <coughs> Yolanda said, you let them do it. April said, it was your home. So God went to the, the angel of the house and said, hey, bro, this is your house. Clip said it because you knew better than all of them. 
God gave me the rule. My father gave me the law. He laid down a law to me as far as my friends was concerned. They didn't know the law. <clears throat> so God went to Hananiah. Go and tell Hananiah. God went to Jeremiah. Go tell that boy. This is what the Lord says. You have broken a wooden yoke. So all that cute stuff y'all doing with the symbolicness, symbolic stuff. No, nah, bro. You too weak to break what I put on these people. You broke a wooden yoke, but you have replaced it with a yoke of iron. The Lord of heaven's armies, the God of Israel says, I have put a yoke of iron on the necks of all the nations, forcing them into slavery. I have put everything, even wild animals under his control. You breaking something so cute. You broke wood. Uh, anybody who, who takes up karate could do that. Then Jeremiah the prophet said to Hananiah, listen, bro, listen. Your pastor should call Brian Song Carnal. She said, hey, bro, listen. The Lord has not sent you. Why can't y'all be that bold like I'm doing tonight? But the people believe your lies. Well, brother Jeremiah, you said amen. God had to rebuke you. Therefore, this is what the Lord says. You must die. If prophets today so-called lived in the time of this. None of the prophets would live today if they was under this kind of. Your life will end this very year because you have rebelled against the Lord. Two months later, the prophet Hananiah, what, died. These prophets so-called today don't realize how much grace is hovering over their lives. They have no clue that God's ticking time bomb eventually is going to go off. Mm. Isaiah chapter 1 17 let's see where do, do I have it here Isaiah are you here Isaiah chapter 1 17 this is where God was rebuking the Israelites he was rebuking them and rebuking them and then when he get down here to the bottom he tells you what is the whole duty of man? <laughs> Wash yourself and be clean. Get your sins out of my sight. Give up your evil ways. Learn to do good. Seek justice, not perverted justice as we've been seeing from these people and from y'all who's in these churches, perverted justice. He says, do good, seek justice, help the oppressed. Not just be given tithes and offerings in your church to pay some some salaries and some um, uh, some rent or some mortgage of the building. And the church can't even afford to take care of the poor. Even the poor that are members of your church, the church cannot afford to take care of the poor. That is a ridiculous shame. Defend the cause of orphans. Fight for the rights of widows. This is the whole duty of man right here. All right. Do good. That's Ecclesiastes talks about. Keep God's commandment and fear the Lord. That's the whole duty of man. Those two here. It breaks it down. Do good. Seek justice. Help the oppressed. Defend the cause of orphans and fight for the rights of widows. If you could just focus on that, you wouldn't be so overtaken by these cute little charismatic prophets and prophetesses because they don't bring this up they always raising money for themselves that's it right there that is what we ought to do that's the whole duty of man it's just that simple but what's happening here is is isaiah chapter 3 Silly women. Tricks are for kids. Isaiah chapter 3 is the problem. It's too much to read, but I'm going to glance through it. Right here. I told y'all going along, but I'm, I'm at the bottom. I'm at the bottom. The Lord, heaven's armies, 
will take away from Israel, from Jerusalem and Judah everything you depend on. Every bit of bread, water, soldiers, prophets, fortune tellers, elders, army officers, high officials, advisors, skilled. I'm going to take all that away. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take it away. I will make boys their leaders. Brian Song carnality started off as a little boy lying to y'all then. And toddlers, their rulers. People will oppress each other, man against man, neighbor against neighbor. Young people will insult their elders. How many times have y'all seen that? Every day. And vulgar people will sneer at the honorable. This was happening way back then, and it's happening today. In those days, uh-oh, that sounds like it's talking about right now. A man will say to his brother, since you have a coat, yeah, you be our leader. Because you got a coat. So you the leader now. Take charge of the heap of ruins. But he will reply, no, 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 no. I, I can't help. I, I don't have any extra food or clothes. Oh, don't put me in charge. Come on. But Jerusalem will stumble and Judah will fall because they speak out against the, the Lord and refuse to obey him. They provide, I'm sorry, they provoke him to, to his face. The very look on their faces give, gives them away. They display their sin like the people of Sodom and don't even try to hide it. They are doomed. They have brought destruction upon themselves. Tell the godly that all will be well. Tell the godly all will be well for y'all. They will enjoy the rich reward, but the wicked you're doomed, for they will get exactly what they deserve. Look at this, 12. Childish leaders oppress my people, and women rule over them. Wow. Women. Oh, my people, your leaders mislead you. They send you down the wrong road. The Lord takes this, his place in the court and present his case against the people. The Lord comes forth to pronounce judgment on the elders and the rulers of the people. You have ruined Israel. Ruined them. Mm. It goes on, y'all. It, it goes on. Children will lead them. Little boys, young folks, going to lead them down a rabbit hole to destruction. The whole duty of man. Somebody brought it up. I think Michelle Carter brought up in uh, James chapter 1 and 27 talks about pure religion. I mean, since we're in Bible study, Y'all here, we might as well do this. What is it, 27? What is pure religion? And undefiled before God and the Father is this. What? Visit the fatherless, widows, and their affliction, and keep yourself unspotted. Let's see what NLT says. <clears throat> pure and genuine religion in the sight of God the Father means caring for orphans. Man, when the last time y'all went to go to see an orphan? Hmm? I've been adopting children for years. I take them to, to, to movies. I take them out to eat. I take them for walks. I drive some of y'all's kids to their, to college. I'm talking many, 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 many miles away. I do that. I go to their cotillions and their, and their proms. I mean, I, I love to do that for the children. Because many of them, their fathers are alive, but the fathers are not present in their lives. So I'll take them. There's plenty, plenty of kids to go around. Just, just, just grab them up. Be a big brother, a big sister. You may not be able to bring them into your home, but do something with them. So when they go off to college, I, Sir Walter Jones, I don't brag about this stuff. I don't talk about this because y'all know I don't like doing it. But I have to bring this up as an example. I send them money. When they go, when they leave the church and say, we're going to college, I say, what's your cash app? What's your mailing address? I want to send you some money. I, trust me, I know how it is to be in a college uh, uh, 12, 1,500 miles away and hungry and no money. That was me. And I had to live off of popcorn and Coca-Cola. The kitchen shut down when I was able to eat in the kitchen. The kitchen, the last meal, 
was five or six o'clock for a man who was always in the entertainment world <laughs> who's a musician we we didn't go to bed till two three in the morning so we were eating at 11 12 midnight that's why i eat late today everybody's like you ought to eat too late you eat too late i've been eating like this since i picked up a, my first instrument as a teenager traveling around the, the country with my father and my my and, and our family band we would do these churches and, and, and midnight musicals and all this stuff, and we would go out to eat at midnight, one, two in the morning. Our mentality, our, our, our intestinal system just got used to it, and this has been all my life. I went to college, and the, and the kitchen closed at 5 o'clock. I mean, that's the last meal. So that meal got to last me all through the night. It was tough. So I had to get potato chips from the vending machine and Coca-Cola to feed me. Mm -hmm. Y'all better help me. Y'all better help me. Help me. Help me. I think you misunderstood what I was asking. Is a pastor a teacher or a false teacher if he or she says it there? Okay. Yeah, I got to keep with this teaching or or, or we're going to be here for another two nights. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is how we do in coaching. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you for the super chat. I am, I am gold. And whoever else did give, I, I, I might have missed you if you did. All right, look at this. Caring for the orphans and widows in their distress and refusing to let the world corrupt you. Mm. Mm. You too, my dear sir? That's a blessing. I'm being a uh, uh, process for the Forever Friends program. For fa Ooh, I love that. Love it. Anybody else? I love that. <laughs> yeah, Dinah. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I give to St. Jude Hospital, one of my favorite places to give. I give to the food depository here in Chicago. I trust them because when I was hungry, I pulled from the food depository, so I'm giving, I want to give back. It's, there's some wonderful places to give. And there's this sense of accomplishment and that you fed somebody. That is one of the greatest feelings in the world is when you know you fed somebody. David Brown, bless it to you. Thank you for that super chat. It's the greatest feeling, y'all. Mm -hmm. Let me end this. What is zero-based prophecies? Zero based prophecies is don't build on what another person has said. Start from zero. Let the Lord speak to you and then prophesy. You all are um, doing emotional prophecies. Emotional prophecies is what's happening here. And the final product is not of the Lord. So you need to be careful of that perfect example let's see i think i saw a brian song carnality <laughs> i think i got him up here all right because i'm gonna show y'all is it on facebook perfect example uh let's see we ship directly and this is a testimony um oh here's one um Okay. Here's what Prophet Karn is saying to you today. I prophetically prophesied that Trump will be reelected. But as a prophet, since Sunday, there is an uneasiness I'm feeling in my spirit that something is shifting and changing in the balance. And the church must do what he's commanded us to do. I'm telling you what I heard. And I'm also telling you what I saw in my dream. Joe Biden was the president. That was the dream. But I have prophesied that Trump will triumph. Here's what I'm saying to you today. <laughs> I prophesied that I would be changing my eating habits. <laughs> but as I continue to 
drive by all of these restaurants. There's an uneasiness in my spirit. <laughs> Talking the Wendy's, man, the, the Cheesecake Factories, the in and outs. My God, the checkers, the, the rallies, depending upon which region you're in. It's called something. I don't have time to teach that. There's a shifting in my spirit. <laughs> I'm telling you what I heard and what I saw. I heard the Lord wants me to be a vegan. I saw myself eating a Chick-fil-A sandwich. Whole thing. Deluxe, ain't that? In its entire. <laughs> Deluxe. I heard the Lord wants me to be a vegan. I saw <laughs> myself eating every crumb of a Chick Fil A sandwich <laughs> until we begin to wake ourselves up. Every crumb of Chick Fil A sandwich. Oh my God! And this is my point here. Okay, because I got one more verse to read to y'all, and we can go. All right. Because as I was preparing the show, a silly woman testified at church today. All right. I ain't picked up one since that day, and I smoked for over 40 years. God delivered. 40 years I smoked cigarettes. You probably can hear it in my voice. God told me, if you don't put them down, I'm going to smite your black ass with lung cancer. And he, well, ass in the Bible, right? I hope I ain't offend nobody, but that's what he told me, straight up. If you don't put them down, I'm going to give you lung cancer. I ain't picked up one since that day, and I smoked for over 40 years. God delivered me. He delivered me. Silly women. Silly women. I'm done with y'all. I'm so done with y'all. So I'm so I'm so so done with y'all. Jeremiah twenty three thirty. All right, <laughs> let's shut this down. Uh, Jeremiah twenty three thirty. This gonna hurt you, prophets. This gonna really hurt you. This gonna hurt. This gonna hurt you. This is going to hurt you. This is going to hurt you. Oh, this is going to hurt you. Mm -hmm. God cuss like Kirk. <laughs> My folk go to church and I just don't understand. Uh -huh. Okay, now, here's what it says. All right, then you can start setting the clock, clock keeper. <laughs> All right, right here. Blessing to you, those of you who have been given in the cash app and the, the uh, super chat. My heart is broken because of the false prophets. Man, why y'all break his heart? Huh? And my bones tremble. I stagger like a drunkard, like someone overcome wine because of the holy words the Lord has spoken against them. Jeremiah is shaking in his boots because of what God has said about the prophets. For the land is full of adultery and it lies under the curse. The land itself is in mourning. The land is mourning. Its wilderness pastures are dried up pastures for they all do evil and abuse what power they have. All these prophets. Man. Oof. Even the priests and prophets are ungodly, wicked. Wow. Blessing to you, Daniel Collins. I've seen their despicable acts right here in my own temple, right in my own church. I've seen this mess. And he said, I'm shaking in my boots. I went to a church in a particular city. Thank you for that, uh, Angelia. With the church, the pastor said, let's go. I was his musician. 
His church went to another pastor, a prophet. We were there. I'm on the piano, playing the piano, and uh, the guest pastor whom I traveled with got up to tell the host pastor's members, all right, everybody stand up. Everybody get in the line. Stand in the long line. And he said, all right, host pastor, come here. I want you to stand right there in front of all of them. Stand right there. Now, I want all you members, one by one, you approach the prophet. I want you to kneel. And I want you to uh, say, I dedicate my life and my membership to this church and to you, prophet. And one by one, they walked up to the prophet and they kneeled to the prophet. I dedicate myself, my time, my life, my finances to you. I'll never leave your presence. One by one, they did that. I'm on the piano and sweat began to pour down my face. Like Jeremiah, I began to shake because I was afraid that the Lord was going to move swiftly in this place and kill everybody up in here, including me, because I didn't get my black behind out of there fast enough. I ain't know what to do. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I said, oh my God, this is one of the most dangerous things I had ever experienced in my entire Christendom life. Thank you for the super chat, Priscilla. Just shaking at the piano. Shaking. Literal shaking. So scared I was. That's what Jeremiah was feeling. I dedicate my life to you, prophet. I said, what an occult I'm in. And this was a Baptist church. And most of my bunkers friends are Baptist. And I know none of them have seen that in the <laughs> Thank you, Pamela Evans. That's what's happening here. Therefore, the path they take will become slippery. They will be chased through the park. Dark, that is. And <laughs> chased through the park as well. And there they will fall. For I will bring disaster upon them at the time fixed for their punishment. I, the Lord, I didn't spoke. Y'all know when God speaks, you can't unspeak that. I saw that the prophets of Samaria were terribly evil. They prophesied in the name of Baal and led the people of Israel into sin. But now I see that the prophets of Jerusalem, y'all are even worse. America, 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 this is you. They commit adultery and love dishonesty. They encourage those who are doing evil so that no one turns away from their sins. These prophets are wicked. As the people of Sodom and Gomorrah once were. Once were. <laughs> Therefore, this is what the, the Lord of Heaven's army says concerning the prophets. I will feed them with bitterness and give them poison to drink. For it is because of the Jerusalem's prophets, the wickedness has filled this land. That wickedness. This is what the Lord says. Do not listen to these prophets when they prophesy to you. Ladies, silly women, I'm talking to you. I know brothers. I've been pulled into that. But the show is called Silly Women. All right? I'm talking to you. When I get Corey Miner on the show in another few days, he can talk about the brothers. But I'm going to be topical right now. Hey, silly women, do not listen to these prophets when they prophesy to you. Filling you with futile hopes is always prosperity. It's always a healing. It's always your baby going to come back home. It's always some breach baby. It's always something nice. and do. They never tell you that. Yeah, No, she going to die. Thus said the Lord. Your house is about to explode. You about to catch COVID. They never do that. These prophets in the Bible always told you something. Whether it was good or bad, they told it to you. The prophets today never. They just don't do it. And they say, Give us smooth sayings. Prophesy to us smooth things. And that king was like, no, don't, you know, 
don't don't I, I don't want to hear from him. He never speaks anything good. Every time he come over here, that that was Jezebel's husband. I think it was Ahab, right? That prophet came and said, he was like, mm, I hate him. He always, see, there he is again. Put him in jail. That's what y'all doing today and don't even realize you're doing this mess. They are making up everything. Look at this. They are making up everything they say. They are making up everything they say. Hey, come here. And 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 a prophet Lovey, he do cold reading. He keeps he he's he's reading what what um palm readers do. And illusionists. You ask the right questions, you're gonna get the right answer. Mm. They won't say uh the Lord gives and he takes away from no. Mm mm. I can't apologize for today's show, y'all. I can't do it. I can't. I can't do it. If I have to lose you as a friend, bye-bye, love. Bye-bye, loneliness. Hello, happiness. Look, they do not speak for the Lord. Are you crazy? They keep saying to these who despise my word, don't worry. The Lord says you will have peace. And to those who stubbornly follow their own desires, they say, no harm will come your way. No harm. The Lord's going to give you riches and lands. And uh, you're going to have uh, all kind of stuff. Have any of these prophets been in the Lord's presence? Uh-oh. To hear what he really saying? This is in the Bible, y'all. I didn't write this. Has even one of them cared enough to listen? They're always talking, but they never listen to God. Look, the Lord's anger bursts out like a storm, a whirlwind that swirls down on the heads of the wicked. The anger of the Lord will not diminish until it has finished all he has planned in the, in the days to come. You will understand all this very clearly. I have not sent these prophets, Lord Ham, to the mercy. I have not even sent them. Yet they run around claiming to speak for me. The Lord, here's what the Lord says. Every time somebody come to me, talking about them, now the Lord says, and I sit there and say, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm listening. Speak, Lord. And then when they say stuff, I'm like, my spirit ain't sitting right with that. No, thank you. How dare you go against what the Lord said? No, the Lord didn't say that. You said that. The Lord didn't tell me that. And my spirit, which has a direct link to the Lord, said, you lying to me. I tried and tested your words, and you are fake. Mm. I have offended so many prophets, too many of them. One woman walked up to me, and she's speaking in all kind of tongues. I'm speaking in tongues. And now, here's what the Lord says. I'm sitting there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think she, you know how people cuss like a sailor? They do more cuss words than they do English. Well, she was speaking in tongues like a, a, a sailor who cusses. She did more tongues than she did English. So I understand nothing. I just heard, uh, and, Lord, holy, the rest of his tongue. I said, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Because you're in a, you're in a, are you drunk? Excuse me. I said, no, I, I just, I'm serious. Are you drunk? I'm not drunk. The Lord is speaking to me. No, no, I know a drunk woman when I see one. And, and you must have you must have disguised the liquor on your breath because I don't smell the although your breath isn't a foul. I don't I don't smell liquor, but I think you're drunk, brother Jones. I'm trying to give you a, no, no, you're not, no, you're not. Because when I talk to the Lord, He speaks my language. He speaks English. Say it English to me. It's the King's English. He speaks to me. All right. And all the stuff you go into, I don't understand what you're saying. You could be speaking all kind of cursings on me. No, I think you're drunk. I don't receive nothing what you have to say. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't, I don't, I can't understand anything you have to say. Nothing. 
Nothing. Can, next, who who else is, who else got a word from the Lord? Anybody else? Anybody else? She was highly offended. I was I was offended too. First of all, your breath was bad, so I was offended. You was that close speaking another language, and 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 I, I, I and and I did not study Babel or Rosetta Stone. I hadn't bought the program yet, so I couldn't understand nothing. You didn't have a translator with you. All right, so this this whole conversation just made no sense. I think you're drunk. I think it's that kind of liquor where you don't smell on the breath. Here's a peppermint. I have not sent these prophets, yet they run around claiming to speak for me. Mm. I have given them no message, yet they go on prophet line. If they had stood before me and listened to me, they would have spoken my words. See, which means they are real prophets. I believe they're real prophets. I believe that the Lord used prophets today. I believe he used people who can give a wonderful word of wisdom and word of knowledge without the gimmicks that y'all see today. Who in the house is? No, don't be asking who in the house. The Lord gave you this word. You go and walk over to the person and you find the person. You give the person's name and you speak the word in their in their ears. You don't always have to speak over the microphone because it brings attention to you. If I walk into another church and somebody said, now who lives at or who's, who's this person? No, that ain't, I'm sorry. The Lord didn't send you. That's a private matter. Now you done gave my address out. This chick right here been after me for a long time trying to figure out where I live. And you gonna, <clears throat> hey, this thing on, this thing on, uh, who, let me see. Who live at 555 Sycamore Avenue, Chicago, Illinois, 60695? Anybody? 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 And I'm like, mm, mm, mm. I know that's my address, but I can't. Because that girl right there been chasing me. She's a gold digger. I'm like, mm, mm, mm. Okay, whose name start with a W and end with a J? Mm, mm. Now everybody looking at me. I think it's you. And I'm like, that could be Willie, Willie James. That could be Willie James. Okay, uh, who got a middle name D? Walter, that's you, W, D, J, that's you. That could be Willie Deloney James. That ought to be me. Okay, uh, who is tall, black, handsome, with a big nose, uh, with a white tie, black suit, with a rope? That's you. Uh, present. <laughs> Now at the church, this girl, now I drive up to the house and there she is parked in, the, in my driveway. She, dri she right there. Hi, Walter. What you doing here? You live two hours away. I, I, I just, the Lord gave me the address. <laughs> yeah, okay. And they would have turned my people from their evil ways and deeds. And I, a God, am I a God who is only close at hand, says the Lord? Nah, bruh, I am far away at the same time. Can anyone hide from me in secret place? Nah. Am I not everywhere in all the heavens and earth, says the Lord? Huh? Yes, I was everywhere. 25. I have heard these prophets say, listen to the dream I had. Ah, uh, did y'all not hear this all night? I've been on the show for two over two hours, and all these guys are saying I had a dream from the God from God when last night, and then they proceed to tell lies in my name. The Lord visited me last night. How long will this go on, y'all? And how long will y'all allowed to go? On? If they are prophets, they are prophets of deceit. Inventing everything they say by telling these false dreams. They are trying to get my people to forget me. Just as their ancestors did by worshiping the idols of Baal. Let these false prophets tell their own, tell their dreams. But let my true messenger faithfully proclaim my every word. There is a difference between straw and grain. Lord have mercy. Mm. Lord. Does not my word burn like fire? It is, is it not like a mighty hammer that smashes a rock? Though that word, y'all, it cut. 
and it cut through the what, y'all? The M and the B. Can y'all tell me what that is? And that's not Missionary Baptist Church. Therefore, says the Lord, I am against these prophets who steal messages from each other. There it is. That's my whole point that I was bringing up about the zero. Zero based prophecies. And emotional prophecies. The final product is not the Lord. They are borrowing from one another. They get messages from each other and claim they are from God. I am against these smooth tongues prophets who say this prophecy is from the Lord. I'm against these false prophets. They're imagine their imaginary dreams. <laughs> imaginary dreams are flagrant lies. That lead my people into sin. I did not sin or appoint them. And they have no message at all. For my people. I the Lord have spoken. They are liars y'all. They are liars. I'm at the end. I'm at the end. I promise y'all. This is the end. This is the end. Suppose one of the people. Or one of the prophets. Or priests ask you. Hey what prophecy has the Lord burdened you? with now you must reply you are the burden you're the burden the lord says he will abandon you you are the burden so the next time they come up to you with that you say you're the burden This is just too much, too much. It's just too much, too much. If any prophet, priest, or anyone else says, I have a prophecy from the Lord, I will punish that person along with his entire family. Lord, have mercy. God, you're just heavy. You're walking heavy. You should keep asking each other, what is the Lord's answer? Or what is the Lord saying? But stop using the phrase prophesy from the Lord. For people are using it to give authority to their own ideas, turning us upside down the words of our God, the living God, the Lord of the heavens. Um, this is what you should say to the prophet. What is the Lord's answer? Huh? What's his answer? I can't hear you. Or what is the Lord saying? Huh? But suppose they respond, this is a prophecy from the Lord. Then you should say, this is what the Lord says. <laughs> Here's what the real prophecy is. Because you have used this phrase, prophesy, prophesy, prophecy from the Lord, even though I warned you not to use it, I will forget you completely. I will expel you from your, my presence along with this city that I gave to you at your, at your ancestors, and I will make you an object of ridicule, and your name will be infamous throughout the ages. I got to go, y'all. I got. I have really bored your patience. I bored your patience. That room and where that prophecy was about the um, giving, your dedicating your life to the prophet, that prophet, he died shortly after that visit. He was dead. Yeah, Diane, do these prophets know if this is in the Bible? Again, test, try the spirit, and make sure that it is of the Lord. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and look at what the scripture says about prophets and how they should prophesy. Go to the 29th verse. This should help you a little bit. Let two or three people prophesy. And let the other evaluate what is said. Y'all understand? This keeps the chaos down. 
But if someone is prophesying and another person receives a revelation from the Lord, the one who was speaking need to be quiet. Stop. In this way, all who prophesy will have a turn to speak one after the other so that everyone will learn and be encouraged. Remember, the people who prophesy are in control of their and of, of their spirit and can take turns subject to the prophet. The spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. You are in control of your, your tongue. For God is not a God of disorder, but of peace, as in all the meetings of God's holy people. That's everywhere y'all go. Y'all got that? Hmm. I hope you understood that. Thank you, Drew. I appreciate you. I went long, y'all. I had to. Rarely do I go two and a half hours. But I needed to get this out to those of you who are moved, who are in to the new year now. I can't let you get away with this stuff that y'all doing. I'm not going to do it. I'd rather lose you as a friend. And stop taking every word I say personal. Please stop that. Stop being that silly. That every time I go live, you think I'm talking about you. You are insecure. And you have a very low self-esteem. That's you. I'm talking to you. You know I'm talking to. I'm talking to you. Low self-esteem. Because trust me, if I hadn't said these little things I'm saying now, my phone would be ringing and text messages and email. You, Were you talking about me, Brother Jones? I, you know, I, because I, uh, I was wondering. No, I ain't talking to you unless that shoe fits you. You're too sensitive. And how are you gonna be a believer in you that sensitive? I mean, who are you winning to be that sensitive? I just don't understand how you how you could be so sensitive. I never met such sensitivity in the body of Christ. Just sensitive, Lord. Too much, too much, just too much. <laughs> it's just too much. All right? I'm sensitive. I just, I'm just not going to show y'all too much of that. My way of dealing with sensitivity is to, to put okay in the text or in the email. If I disagree with you, I'm going to say okay. And I'm going to walk away. And you may not hear from me for a couple of days. Because I don't feel like your drama. Okay. I don't like fighting. I don't like all of that. That's not, my, that's not in my spirit. So okay means I'm done. And when you come back, uh, let's talk about a Febreze or something. But I may not want to revisit that unless I have to revisit. Some things need to be revisited. If they don't have to be revisited, I ain't talking about it no more. And I'm going to let you know. Oh, this subject right here? Oh, that's dead. That died with my O dot K dot. We're done. <laughs> Let's move on to another subject. Yeah, that, that's the way I handle it. You don't have to agree with the way I handle it. I, I don't care. But I'm done. God, we thank you for your presence here. We thank you for the people who have watched the show and were offended. I thank you for them. Your word says, Woe to you when all men speak well. I know everybody's not going to like the show today. Those who are going to watch it years on, they're not, they're not going to like it. That's a good thing. Because I said something that sparked something with the hopes that something good will come out of it. Study to show yourself approved. Get into the word of God. And be noble. Dissect it. Just rip it from side to side and put it on the table. And just every word, every jot and every tittle, just examine it. And then eat it like you told the prophet. Just eat it whole. And let it turn in your belly. 
that word. He did it to me. I pass this on to other folks. These prophets who are still alive, God save them today. Your grace and mercy is hovering over them like a like a dark cloud. And they don't even realize that the day is going to come when the lightning bolt is then going to strike and then the rain is going to come down on their lives. I pray, oh God, that they get it right before the rain comes. Help them to see the light. And these silly people who are hanging around them, save them because they are the ones that are giving them a place. They're giving them the resources and the means to flee, uh, uh, fleece the flock. Help my people as we go into this new year, the year of teacher. The year of the gift of teaching is going to be heavy on my life, oh God. And I will not let you down. That is my vow to you. Be with them as you be with me every day. We love you, oh God. And we give your name the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Uh, Drew asked the question, uh, would you ever consider doing a call-in show? I thought about it. I, I had a call-in show for several years on uh, my podcast. Go to Spreaker.com, and we did have people call in. And uh, those can be shaky because you don't know who's going to call in. <laughs> so I did do that for, for a long time. Thank you, Deborah. Uh, here, I'm not ready yet. Not yet. But I do do video confrontations, you know confrontations yeah they do turn out to be confrontations okay um so people do can schedule to be on the show through video i'll have you as a as a guest but your your talking points must be interesting we don't do for breeze and bubblegum shows on the still water jones show no we don't do that we talk about some very hardcore stuff because the bunkers are meat eaters they don't drink milk it's sour in their stomach so it needs to be something that is very gripping so that uh, we can help the people. That's what the Lord gave me. All right. My next Bible study is February. Send me an email. My email is fixed. So, Brother Johnson, if you're there, I see your email. Um, and quite a few of the bunkers who have not heard from me, I was having problems. Really, I was, y'all. So I had to shut it all down because it just it's just been horrible. It's been horrible, all right? So I see Joyce Sample, I see you, all right? I see all your emails now, all right? Lorraine, Steele, Alice, Mitchell, uh, uh, Pat Friedman, I see all your stuff, all right? Totally committed. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be answering a lot of y'all who I didn't get to. Marion, yeah, Timothy Johnson, Gail Anderson, a lot of you here, Crystal Wright, I see your emails, all right? Now, I'm going to spend the rest of the week answering old emails all right i'll still be live i'll be live T uh, tomorrow is my grandson's birthday amir is turning two 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 and uh i guess we're gonna go somewhere in the afternoon my daughter got two two parties planned for him you know these millennials i will never understand i'll never understand i just don't understand if we got two parties planned for a two-year-old can you imagine what they're going to do when he graduated from high school? No, when he graduated from grammar school, they're probably going to take a European trip. <laughs> when he graduated from high school, they're probably going to have the vice president at, at wishing him a happy birthday coming off of the U.S. <laughs> an airplane and somewhere in Great Britain somewhere. And uh, the king at the time, is it William? I don't know. And that's from grammar school. When he when he graduated from high school, they're gonna have some Clyde Dale horses. And then the the king of Siam was gonna come show up. These these kids, I mean when he when he graduated from, from college, there's nothing else to do. There's just nothing else to give him. What do you give a man or a baby who's had everything? <laughs> like he's two. He ain't gonna remember none of this. <laughs> 
Let him just give him a talker toy and say, I'll see you in three more years when you remember some stuff. I just don't get it. I just don't get it. But I'm going to sure be there, though. I'm going to be there. <laughs> I'm going to be there. Taking pictures because he, for the first time, is going to get his hair cut, y'all. He's getting his hair cut. Because he's all over the place. And he got all that. Uh, he, my grandson is a Mexican. He's he's half Mexican, half black. So he's black. <laughs> okay. Because his father's half Mexican. All right. So he got all that pretty, pretty way they hair. He going to give the girls the big problem. All right. Big, big problems. Big problems. Big, 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 tall problems. All right. So he's getting his hair cut. Junior Junior got his hair cut on his birthday or shortly after. And he's got, he, he, he's, it's my kids, man. My kids crack me up. I thank God for them. All right, y'all. I see you. So I won't be live tomorrow, but maybe uh, Tuesday I'll be live, I guess. Some of the bunkers are having birthdays as well. Jackie Miller birthday is tomorrow on Amir's birthday as well. All right, y'all say happy birthday to Jackie Miller. She is a bunker. She uh, is the one that sang the my opening theme song um, with Dawn there in North Carolina. Y'all remember that video when they was outside? He's the one. Did dun, did dun, dun, did dun, did dun. One was on the one and the three. The other was on the two and the four. <laughs> That's them. I love them two right there, man. That's them two right there in my heart. Her birthday is tomorrow, too. All right. So y'all wish her a happy birthday, Jackie Miller. All right. She loves the word. She's hungry for the word. All right. And so let's see what we can do. See what we can do. All right. Amen. I see all the happy birthdays. They let Jackie, I don't know if you're here, but they're wishing you a happy birthday, girl. You better get in this. You better get up in here while you can because I'm shutting the show off. All right. They on Facebook and YouTube wishing you a happy birthday, man. That's good stuff. Good stuff. Can't wait for my birthday. <laughs> I'm spoiled. All right, y'all. I'm going. Hey, clock keeper, where you at? I mean, I mean, we pay you the big bucks. How you not putting the clocks up? Thank you, Pam. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Gene Swink. Thank you, Andrell Perry. Thank you all for giving to the cash app. My back is doing so much better. Thank you all for your prayers. The prayers of the righteous the best months because all day long, although I do still feel the pain, it's not... I can actually bend. I couldn't bend. I can bend over and I can do normal stuff. I know it's there. The pain is still there, but not like it was when I last went live. So, man, and I and yes, I popped a couple of Motrins, but I didn't have to do that many like I did the first couple of days. So I would pop two Motrins and I'd be fine for 14, 15 hours, you know, so I don't have to, I don't I don't have to take as much pain pills, but I do want the infl inflammation to go down. So I'm you know I keep doing it until I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> I keep doing it until I'm not gonna do it. But thank y'all for the prayers because it, it, y'all may think it's in the motion, but I think it's really in y'all's prayers. <laughs> I think it's really in y'all's prayers. All right. Oh, Lame I'll take it easy, Monty, sir. Thank you. All right, uh, go to Facebook and hit the subscribe button, will you please? Subscribe to the channel. For those of you who are not doing it, the average listener, are not, they're not subscribed to the channel. So go ahead and subscribe because I'll get 2,000 views, but only a couple hundred are subscribed. That's that's typical across the uh, the YouTube thingy. So subscribe to the channel. Hit thumbs up, please. And uh, you can spread this gospel all over the world. Did I upset you today? Yes, I did my job. I came into the new year upsetting the saints. Hallelujah, I did something right. All right, let's see what else. Corey Miner will be on in another few days, and he's going to finish the upsetness. All right, I love y'all. Take care. This is myself and the brother from the acapella group uh, playing uh, Old Lang Syne. Way to, I always bring in a new year with this, all right, for the new bunkers. I love y'all. Take care of yourselves and one another. Oh, uh, the clock keeper said 20 billion <laughs> hours long. <laughs> okay, wait. I had one here. Simone says God sends the false prophets to test the people. Yes, he will judge not only the false prophets, but those who chase after the depth. There you go. And I agree. 
God allowed Donald Trump to be the president of the United States like he did Obama. <clears throat> People said oh, Obama was the devil and he, he didn't belong there because they wanted, they loved Donald Trump. The people who hated Donald Trump love Obama. God allowed both of them. And these are wheels, whether they're permissive wheels or perfect wheels, a wheel is a wheel. If it came from God, all right? And he did that or allowed it for a reason to teach y'all a lesson. So prophets, false and fake ones, they in y'all's lives for a reason to teach y'all a lesson. Uh, our dear sister just told y'all in the comment section, go after her. She lives, Simone lives at 555 Sycamore Avenue, Westchester, Alabama. Her zip code is 93467. All right, that's Simone. All right, go to her house tonight. Knock on her door. Bring some cookies. Okay? I love y'all. Ain't nothing you can do about it. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs>
Fellas, does it seem like you can't get a good woman? Ladies, wonder why you can't keep a man? Then read The Four Women That Men Desire, Volume 1, by Sir Walter Jones to figure out how to break the cycle. Go to Amazon.com to get your copy today.